Danny was a freshman at the University of Missouri. We knew he was in the pledging process. They just summoned them all to the basement. They blindfolded them. They all had their shirts off. Danny was given a bottle of vodka. They were told to drink the bottle. I believe that the bottle was taped to his hand. He had put the bottle down probably four times, and his pledge dad would give it back to him. Then after a while, he was getting messed up, and Danny would say, no more, no more, I'm done. And then someone said to him, there's no in the house today. One of the fraternity members also gave him a beer bong. So mixed with the vodka, after that, it's when he fell back and couldn't stand up anymore, and that's when they picked him up and threw him on the couch. At some point, he rolled over and was halfway on the floor. Danny was down and unattended for about 45 minutes to an hour. And at that time, his lips were blue. When you see someone and their lips are blue, something's not right here. They picked him up and dragged him down the hall, dropped him, and put him in a car. And the hospital is probably a block and a half away. When we got the call that no one wants to get, close to 1.30 in the morning. It was an ER doctor, and she said, well, we have your son here in the emergency room. And she said he had stopped breathing, that we just probably needed to get there as soon as possible. His blood alcohol content was 0.486. The legal limit is 0.08, and Danny's was six times. When I arrived and I saw Danny for the first time in the hospital bed, it, it was like a nightmare. He was on a respirator. The doctors basically said this was caused by alcohol poisoning. I resigned from my job back in April just to take care of Danny. I'm pretty much his main caregiver. He can't really do anything for himself, so we have to do everything for him. Every morning at 4.30 a.m., I have to start the pump for his feeding tube. And I have to just fill the bag here with his formula. The portion of Danny's brain that was damaged is movement and speech, so he cannot move or he cannot speak. And the other part of the brain that was affected was the occipital lobe, so there was no vision. But his hearing is good. This is just the Hoyer lift that we use to get Danny out of bed in the morning. We'll hook him up here, and then we'll put him in his wheelchair. Oh, 100% sure Danny is engaged with us when we're talking to him. He's tuned in, and we can tell just by the way he turns his head towards us. And thank God he has the hearing, because that's, that's huge. If I say, hey, Danny, Danny, can you hear me well? Do you know this is dad? Blink for me, and he will blink. We added this shower area for Danny. We'll get him up in the lift, put him in a shower chair, and then this is the area that we shower him in. Danny gives us our strength. I mean, we have to be there for him 100% of the time to help him, to be strong and be positive so we can bring him out of this. We, we don't know what Danny, Danny's future holds. We, we seriously do not know. We're gonna do whatever it takes, but we seriously don't know. This was, this was avoidable. This did not have to occur. So when, when you found out about this, uh, it was the middle of the night, right? You got, you got a phone call? Who, who answered the call? My wife. Okay, Mary Pat, you, you answered the phone, and what did they say to you? Um, it was the, the ER doctor. Um, she she, I answered, and she asked me if I had a... A uh, son at the University of Missouri, and I said yes, and she asked um, what his name was, and I said Danny Santuli. And she says that we have your son here at, uh, in the emergency room, um, that he had gone into cardio cardiac arrest and he had stopped breathing. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.